Welcome to Discovering Star Trek, it's Entertainment Talks podcast for Star Trek Discovery on CBS, All Access and Netflix in the UK. I'm your host Matthew and this is for Season 3, Episode 4, Forget Me Not. Um, I thought this was a good episode. Uh, I thought in a few places it got a bit, not complicated, but a bit ambitious and it got a bit... Um, I don't know, this episode could have been a little bit shorter at certain points, I thought. Uh, particularly with um, Adira and her trying to sort of find her past and that kind of stuff. I, I, I did enjoy the story that they told there. I thought that was good. And uh, I'm glad that we've, you know, straight away getting this new character in the show. And, you know, she's young and kind of ambitious and whatever. And um, she wants to kind of explore her past so I'm glad that so soon after they introduced the character and she spoke to Paul and obviously she goes on the uh, trip with Michael in this episode and I'm I'm glad that how quickly they got things going with that like you know that she meets Paul and then meets Michael and meets, meets all the crew basically of Discovery and then um, you know pretty much the next episode or maybe it was the one after that uh, she's off on this on this mission to sort of uh, find out about more about her past, and I thought that was good. I thought it executed really, really well. I just thought the pacing was slightly off with that. I thought that they went a few places too many, maybe with it, um, but it, it it worked out in the end. I thought they they told the story that they wanted to tell, and uh, it was effective. It was interesting. It was acted pretty well. So I thought I thought that was good, but just the pacing of it was. Um, was a little bit off. Uh, lots of character development in this episode. I mean, the the, the Adira and Grey thing is the is the main um, point of the episode. So I thought I'd talk about that first. That was good. Like I said, a little bit incorrectly paced, maybe, but at, at the end of the day, it was good. So uh, that was good. Um, yeah, thought that the activities arranged by Saru and Hugh in this episode were quite good. I did like seeing Hugh going around the ship. Uh, at the start of the episode and sort of checking in on everyone i'm also really glad connecting to that that uh i think it's De- um De- denver the the pilot of the ship um her getting sort of checked over and then you know at the start of the episode she doesn't really want to open up nobody really does because everyone's kind of miserable or whatever for reasons that they explain um because of how they sort of been detached from society and you know the real world basically because he, he talks uh, I think there's a the voiceover from Hugh at the start and he talks about you know we've missed birthdays and funerals and anniversaries and you know life events that people have perfectly normal ones and we've missed all them and we've you know skipped into the future and um, there's just that disconnect from society there because although some characters on the ship are alien not all of them are so uh, yeah there's, there's still that bit of human disconnect and I do like when a show sort of breaks away a little bit from its main story and kind of says like hey stop a minute you know these are human characters or characters with feelings and they're not just going to plow through with the plot and ignore the fact that these people have you know feelings and emotions about the situation that they're in which they do and it's quite a big deal what they're kind of going through so I thought that was great I thought the two different sort of I guess you'd call them set pieces um which is a word I like to use but uh two sort of different set pieces one with um the meal which I think we can say didn't go particularly well unfortunately uh that was interesting and then of course the uh, cinema thing at the end what do they call those it's like a silent film isn't it? I thought that was uh, quite interesting as well. A little, a little black and white film. I don't know if that was supposed to be a real film or what it was supposed to be, or if it was a reference to something, or if there was references in there. We didn't see a whole lot of the actual film. We just sort of heard um, bits of laughter and then the actual characters themselves laughing, which was the point of it. So, yeah, I don't know if there's any like Easter eggs or tie-ins. We didn't see a whole lot of the actual film itself, anyway. So. Um, yeah, I thought they did a good job with, um, you know, the two different activities. And again, kind of, you have a lot of things that kind of feed into each other in this episode. You've got the human aspect of missing real world events. You've got the two different sort of, I'll call them scenes. Set pieces doesn't feel like the right word to use. With the, the one that fails and the one that works. Um, with uh, the cinema and then with the um, the dinner thing I thought was kind of interesting. I'm really, really glad as well that by the end of the episode they finally, you know... Um, Den Denver or Devna 
uh, the, I still don't quite know what her name is. It's like Denver or Denver or something like that. Um, she goes up to Hugh at the end of the episode, and uh, of course says, you know, you know about that talk. Can, can we can we have that? And it was getting a little bit annoying when in the pi- not the pilot, sorry, for the season premiere, she kind of had those weird flashes or that there was something mentally kind of going on with her and given that she's got you know that thing on the side of her head which i'm sure has got a name that i can't quite remember at this point um um but yeah she's she, she's had things like that happen to to her before i think or or some character who was similar to her they had like their brain got hacked or something like that i don't know star trek's had some funny interesting stuff that's happened um but i wanted them to go back to that and lean on it because although she's not quite a front runner main character she's the pilot of the discovery she's not a small character with no name she's not like you know a michael or a saru or hugh or somebody like that um but yeah she's she's a character with a name and she's the pilot of the discovery so i kind of wanted them to go back and uh, explore that a little bit so i'm glad they kind of at least hinted at it again because hugh did say to her in the episode like oh you know yeah we could we we could talk and stuff and she kind of wants to take up the offer. There's clearly still something going on there because even though we didn't see her in this episode have those little like weird flashes or whatever, um she does seem very very off. And given what she says at the uh, actual dinner table about you know landing the discovery and all that sort of thing, the the argument that she has with Paul, there's still clearly something going on there as well. So I'd like them to explore that. I think that could be quite interesting. Um, so let's hope that we see, uh, maybe she'll get her own episode in the future or something, uh, or her own sort of focused episode, so I thought that was good, um, yeah, I thought the episode overall was paced pretty well, uh, I did like seeing, I mean, for me, when it comes to, uh, Star Trek Discovery, it's more about following these characters and seeing what they do, and, and the, the, whatever the story is for the episode is pretty much just the thing that drives that character development forward, um, and I thought they did a, um, a good job with it in this episode so um yeah anyway let's take a quick little break we'll go into some housekeeping and then we'll come back and talk about uh some more of the episode see you in a minute hey there i'm aaron holman host of eye to eye a weekly podcast talk show all about passion i have this passion and this fire within me that burns brighter than the fire around me hello with performing there's always a story to tell whether it's my own or not creativity i go he's more than cute he's creative all with an lgbt twist Make sure to check out Eye to Eye, that's E-Y-E, number two, letter I. And rate and subscribe on Apple Podcasts or wherever you listen in today. I'm Chrissy. And I'm Jackie. And we are Killer Fun. We explore the intersection of crime and entertainment every other week. For as long as people have been communicating, they have been talking about who did what to whom, and is that socially acceptable? Because the boundaries of society, crime, and entertainment have always gone hand in hand. The more salacious, the weird, the better. From books and movies, to television shows and games, we look at how life and art imitate and inform one another. And we can't get together and not laugh. So let's face it. There's going to be laughing. (laughs) Killer Fun is available anywhere you listen to podcasts. So join us. If you'd like to get started with a domain name and a website today, just click on the link in the show notes and that will take you over to Gualu to get started. They also have a live support chat system that you can use, which is in the bottom right hand corner. So get started with a new website and domain name today with Gualu. Hey everybody, if you would like to get the ad-free versions of all of our podcasts and support entertainment talk along the way, all you need to do is head over to patreon.com forward slash entertainment talk, sign up either as a creator or as a Patreon, there's no difference there. That's just the option for either becoming a creator now or just staying as a patron for the moment. And then all you need to do is support us at the $1 level tier. That will get you access to all of the ad-free podcasts that we've done in the the past. And get you access to all the ad-free podcasts in that month as well. So it's a great way to support us on Entertainment Talk and to get rid of the ads and get your ad-free podcasts. You can also become a patron at the $3 level tier. That gets you access to ad-free podcasts. And allows you to redeem a review of a TV show or a film of entirely your choice. That's one per month for either a TV show or a film review, which is at the $3 level tier. As always, thank you very much for listening. Back to the show. 
Alright, recently on Entertainment Talk, just wait for the website to load for a second. Uh, recently on Entertainment Talk, uh, we got the United cast. Manchester United lost 2-1 away to Istanbul in the Champions League. Terrible performance. Defence was just uh, not quite present in that particular match. Uh, Manchester United next faced Everton on uh, Saturday. I think that's away in the Premier League. It's a lunchtime kickoff, half past 12. So uh, look out for the podcast at some point on uh, Saturday as well. Uh, but yes, things are on the edge for the manager at the moment. He could get sacked, we don't know. But uh, we shall see what happens on Saturday. But uh, that's the United cast. Walking Dead World Beyond is up to Season 1, Episode 5. Halfway through the first half of the season. So that's been interesting and good and fun. Uh, You can join us on Wednesdays for those podcasts. Uh, Game we talked this week. We talked about PS5 faceplates. Um, that have been cancelled there might still be some created uh, later on but Sony isn't going to make them at the moment and they uh, sent an email to a a company that was trying to make faceplates to basically get them to cancel them because of um, you know copyright and and whatever Uh, Activision Blizzard we talked about them there's going to be a Blizzcon soon so we uh, speculated on the games that we might see and what we might see from said games as well and we talked about this month's uh, stark difference between PS Plus and Games with Gold games for November for 2020 Atra and Atra Spotlight is back with uh, episode 8 for John Boyega the uh, Star Wars star of course he played as Finn in that saga And uh, there was some trouble there as well. I talked about that. Uh, John Boyega himself is only a little bit older than than me. So I talked about that as well. And also where I first saw him. Which was in uh, 2011's Attack the Block. Which was uh, a good film. So uh, you should check that out if you haven't seen that. But uh, yeah that's uh, episode 8 for John Boyega. Analyzing television episode 3. Talking about the uh, fall of Quibi. Quibi the streaming service. Which I won't explain what it is here. Because I explain that on the podcast. If you don't know what Quibi is. Which some people haven't even heard of it. Which gives to show why it was one of the reasons why it was shut down. But I talked about all those different reasons and competition and what Quibi got wrong and all sorts of other things. And uh, so I talked about that. Fear the Walking Dead Season 6 Episode 4. That's still continuing. I did a podcast for a show called Working Mums. Absolutely phenomenal show. I gave it a must-see rating. It's on CBS and possibly Netflix in the US. And it's on Netflix in the UK as well. So have a look out for that in the future but that's everything we've been doing on entertainmenttalk.org and on podcast platforms uh all right let's get back to star trek talk a little bit about um adira and gray so we got some flashbacks for gray and, and what was going on there and they of course um yeah she did become his boyfriend didn't she because she, she mentioned that in uh when when she was in that weird red room thing with 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 michael there was all those things in there <laughs> i don't really know quite how to describe it uh she gets connected to all that and uh tries to sort of explore her past and remember what happened um it didn't quite connect with me that <sighs> so you've got them landing on this planet right and then they go over to these new people they explain what the deal is with adira and she's got this thing that she needs to connect to. She says that she's hum- she says that she's human. Michael kind of tries to explain it. Uh, one of them asks what her name is. She says Adira. And then uh, one of them asks. Um, Have you got any other names? She says no. She seems very very confused. And then they try to attack. Uh, th- this group of people are trying to attack. Michael and Adira. And it doesn't go well for them. Because Michael's got a phaser. And she gets them out of the situation. Then one of them says about, um, oh, we can help you or, or, or something like that. Um, it, it was, it was a bit, I mean, I, th- I thought that the, this plot line finished quite well. In fact, in terms of like, okay, they decided eventually to explore what, what Adira was or what the situation, you know, explore this thing that was going on. But you get to the planet you completely and utterly disagree um, among pretty much all of these people that Adira shouldn't be have her backstory explored or you know whatever's going on with her. Then you try to attack and kill her and Michael, and then one of you says that you'll do it. You end up there anyway, and then you fix the problem. You all celebrate, and then everyone kind of moves on. I just thought it was a bit strange. 
because like I said, I thought the pacing was a little bit off with this with this story. Um, so I thought like, oh, I, what what I thought was going to happen, which I was clearly wrong about, which is fine. I thought, okay, they're going to try and leave because you know they've they've disagreed about what to do. Michael will take out these people that she did with with the phaser. They'll leave the planet and explore like another option. But then one of them like changes them. It it was I don't know. It didn't quite work for me but once they got past that and then actually was like oh yeah this is where the cave is and you can go and do this thing anyway um they then go there they fix the thing and they you know go into this water and then they find you find out about gray and everything that happens there and the the backstory there again i thought all that was was quite good but it was just paced really weirdly uh so you get there they go into this water. They go into this other red stringy sort of area. Because <laughs> I don't know how else to describe it. Uh, which again, discovering Star Trek. I'm still discovering this universe very much so. Um, they go there. They That activates like her flashbacks. Which shows who Grey is. And they were both orphans. And then they, she opens this box. It works. They get out, they're all wet because they've been in the water. They get this um, quite cool looking towel actually put around them. Adira then reads out like six different names or maybe more than that. One of them is hers. Um, There's like a title in front of all of them, isn't there? And then she says, you know, something, whatever, Adira. Michael's standing there. I don't know, it didn't quite work for me it was it was very kind of i don't know it was just it was a bit strange it, it's one minute you're trying to kill these people and like you completely disagree and then one person comes up to them and says here's where this cave is or whatever a yeah, cave thing they go and do what they need to do so they get there anyway um i don't know i, I don't think you actually needed the conflict because if I'm trying to analyse the situation, which is one of the points of this podcast, let's say they end up on this planet, they don't try and kill Adira and Michael. They go to the cave anyway and do what they need to do anyway. So Yeah. I dunno. Didn't 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 really didn't really work because you end up with the result that because whether you have or haven't got the conflict there, if they get to the planet and they say they don't try to fight or they don't argue and they and they say, Yeah, here's the cave they end up going to the cave anyway. So unless I'm missing something. I'm just trying to give my own opinion. And um, um, my own analysis. If you take out the conflict and the fight. Which I know is only short. But adds a bit of you know tension in there. Do you not get the same result. If the tension and the fight is taken out. Because you still end up. Because. Right the, the conflict happens. This character says here's where the cave is. One of them comes over to them and says oh don't kill me. Here's where the cave. They go and do what they need to do. But then if you take out the conflict. And they agree. And they end up in the cave. And then they still end up doing what they needed to do. Why did you have the conflict in the first place? I know I might seem like I'm nitpicking a little bit. But you could have like avoided that. And like I said the episode felt a little bit too long. That was one of the reasons it felt a little bit too long. Um... But once we actually, but the point I'm trying to make, once you actually get past all that weird conflict that isn't really there for any particular reason, you get there, you actually tell this backstory. That backstory I quite liked and thought was good. That's the good part of this whole plotline or story or whatever you want to call it is, okay, you know, the, these two people were orphans. They like each other. They sort of ended up together. I, I'm, I'm sure Adira says that Grey's her, her boyfriend or something. Um, and then you have this um, scene that works pretty well where Grey gets attacked by something mysterious. There's like this black cloud thing in the mirror and then it like blows up slightly. Um, Grey ends up with a piece of glass in his in his body and then they do this transfer thing to where Grey survived. I'm still not 100 I'm not quite clear if he actually survived or not but then it doesn't sort of matter because there's then the mysterious scene which I think takes place after uh, the cinema thing which I talked about which was quite good you know the, the cinema thing with the, the silent film you then go back to 
Adira and Grey. Michael says bye to Adira and she's practicing her violin, which is which was quite nice actually. I do agree with Michael. It was quite a nice little uh, little tune there, a uh, lullaby sort of thing. Grey pops up. Neither of them know why why or how Grey is actually there. He literally just it's like a video game. He he respawns in uh, <laughs> that room sitting next to her. I don't mind that there's no reason. For that actually. It would be interesting to see if, if there is a reason. And if they sort of figure that out. But Adira says oh how are you here. And Grey says oh I don't know. So neither of them know how they got there. But then they. But then it does lead to a nice moment. Where Grey and Adira. They're sort of together. They're, they're trying to practice this violin and stuff. And that was quite nice. So yeah for me this story does have problems it has some things that you maybe don't need like the conflict because like i said i don't know what the difference would be if the conflict wasn't wouldn't be there because they would end up in the cave anyway um but it does end up telling a quite nice story about adira and gray in the end so i thought that was quite good so that's my point um that's pretty much everything for the episode um yeah, good stuff with the with the crew and everything they did there. Glad that with uh, the pilot with Denver or Devna, um, maybe one day I'll get that name right. That uh, Hugh decided to explore what was going on with her because there clearly is because we saw in the season premiere that there was. So I'm glad that they got back to that and re-explored that. And uh, it looks like there's a hint there as to they might have a conversation. But then the surprise thing came up, which was the cinema. That was nice as well. So I really liked a lot of the things in this episode. There's just a few parts of it that maybe didn't work particularly too much but maybe i'm wrong about that maybe there's something i missed please let me know if i did and uh, i'll consider your feedback of course if you would like to send in that feedback questions comments concerns thoughts ideas whatever about star trek discovery you're more than welcome to do so uh matthew at entertainment talk.org twitter e talk uk there's a contact page and information in your show notes um so just looking ahead because that's pretty much my thoughts on everything in the episode two two real main parts which was the I guess the mental health and the happiness of the crew and then this Adira and Grey story. Both of which I think were very good but one of them's got more problems than the other one. But I am happy with how they ended up in the end so that's good. Uh, looking ahead we still don't particularly have... I mean we got this whole federation thing haven't we that's going on. Like, Are they going to find them one day? Uh, the Discovery could get deleted it seems which that would happen because if that happens... There wouldn't be any show left. So uh, I don't think that's going to happen. But yeah we have the through line of the story. Which is can they find the Federation. We'll see how that goes um, on moving forward. Uh, I'm still assuming that Brooks will atter- return at some point. I don't think it will be anytime soon particularly. Maybe in a, f- in a few episodes time. Um, but we'll see if he comes back. And yeah we'll see which character they decide to focus on next week. I would like if next week's episode does focus on uh, the pilot. On uh, De- Devna. Um, for next episode and we'll see if they decide to do that so overall happy with the episode a few problems but I'll get over it at the end um, so that is that uh, so thank you everybody very much for listening if you would like to find out uh, more that we've got on entertainmenttalk.org all of our uh, content on there TV, video games, films and Manchester United podcast as well uh, you can find all that on ent- entertainmenttalk.org uh, if you like what you've heard today and you want to support it more and uh, you'd like to help out with that that would be brilliant uh, there's a few different options for you Patreon we have the $1 and $3 level tiers for instant ad free podcast and review options Amazon affiliate link if you're buying those Christmas presents or you're treating yourself or both doesn't matter the situation uh, but if you're using Amazon to buy stuff for any particular reason, we can get a small cut of what you spend, but it won't cost you extra. Uh, podcast services, if you search for Entertainment Talk on your favourite podcast platform, uh, please get subscribed to us over there. And if we're not on your favourite podcast platform, if you can't find us on whatever it is that you use, please let us know and we'll look into uh, into that as well. David um, is on uh, geektown.co.uk for TV and film news. You're up to date, up to date, reliable TV and film news. Geektown Radio episodes, your weekly TV and film news on Tuesdays. Have a look out for those. You can find all of that on geektown.co.uk and by searching for Geektown on podcast platforms. Uh, Twitch, a few different things to mention there. Of course, Bex is streaming daily at the moment. At the moment, sorry, over on Twitch. If you search for Trista Bytes, Trista B Y T E S, go and follow her. Check out all that fun, cool stuff as well. I've been streaming a lot more lately, and uh, I intend to do so for the future. Started my um, Pro Evolution Soccer Master League. So if you'd like to see how I 
would manage Manchester United and also try and play as them and uh, try to win something. Uh, you can check that out as well over on my Twitch channel. I will also be streaming uh, Crash Bandicoot 4 at certain points and uh, eventually I'll be streaming Walking Dead uh, Onslaught, the VR game which is actually based on the characters from the show. So that's cool. So uh, lots of different stuff from me over on Twitch as well. You can find my Twitch channel in the link in the description, in the show notes, sorry, so check out that. Uh, word of mouth, you can tell people that you know about uh, anything related to entertainment tool, Geek Town or Trusted Bytes, so please do that. And uh, you can do the same thing, but through social media, Facebook and Twitter, and different Facebook groups if you can, so please do that. And also look out for Let's Play Sunday episodes on Sundays. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you next week for episode 5, or for whatever we do in the meantime. Thanks for listening, I'll see you next time. Cheers.